Unless you've been living under a proverbial rock in the photography world, you've likely heard the quote attributed to Robert Kappa. If your pictures aren't good enough, you aren't close enough. Well, as it so happens, there's some really interesting science behind that photojournalist great's piece of advice. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Photo Forward podcast, where we explore the stories behind some of the greatest visual storytellers in the world. From their photographic origins to finding work-life balance as creative professionals to how to actually make a living as a photographer, videographer, or multimedia creator, we uncover what makes them tick and their shutters click. I'm your host, Ben Brewer. Real quick, before we get into this episode, I just want to give a big thanks to everyone who's listening, subscribing, and dropping a rating or review on the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening. It means so much to me to see you guys commenting and connecting and really starting to grow a community around the show. So going forward, I'm going to be shouting out some of my favorite reviews each week. So the comment of the week this week comes from the user A Trap at Noon, and they said... Loved your interview with Ackerman and Gruber, full of good content, not the usual fluff. Great questions, well formatted, looking forward to more. Thanks a ton, A Trap at Noon. That was definitely one of my favorite episodes too. That's episode eight. You can find that at photoforward.media forward slash podcast. All right, let's get into the show. So you've clicked on this episode of Photo Forward and you're wondering what in the hell is proxemics and what could that possibly do for growing my photography career and style? Let's dive in and learn a little something about the science of personal space in photography. Coined way back in 1963, anthropologist Edward T. Hall described the phenomenon of proxemics as the interrelated observation and theories of humans' use of space as a specialized elaboration of culture. WTF. That's a bit of word soup, so let's break down his whole system. Essentially, when you're interacting with other folks in your normal day-to-day existence, there's four ranges of space between any two people, from farthest to nearest here. Public distance, 12 to 25 feet, beyond which you really don't perceive or take notice of folks. Social distance, 4 to 12 feet. Personal distance, 1.5 to 4 feet. And, bow chicka bow wow, intimate distance, 1 inch to 18 inches. So while we talk a lot about what lenses we mount to our cameras and what a particular focal length does to our subject matter, we don't often think about the proxemic effect of the distance we place ourselves as a photographer. Just the same way that the proximity of me to the microphone changes the tone of the audio, the proximity of you to the subject of your photography changes the tone of your image and what it's trying to suggest. Sure, you might love the 85 millimeter focal length because of how it flatters the human face, but depending on the framing you might be shooting for, the proxemic effect might be subconsciously telling your viewer something completely different entirely. Let's do a little thought experiment here to describe what's going on with proxemics and photography. Let's say you get a call from a client asking you to spend some time shadowing a local business owner. How about a cobbler to keep things interesting? and capture some lifestyle and editorial images of Chris the Cobbler at work. Before you ever set foot in his shop, ideally you're thinking critically about what you want your viewers to think and feel when they see these images in the article. Regardless of what the shop looks like or what the lighting situation might be, but keeping in mind what your editor wants and needs from a design perspective, you want to put the viewer into the appropriate proxemic zone. Photographing Chris the Cobbler in the public distance of 25 to 12 feet is going to make the viewer feel distant and emotionally disconnected. Or conversely, as friendly as this cobbler might be, there's no editor in the world that wants a photo from that intimate distance range of inside 18 inches away. But in a completely different assignment, say a dramatic portrait series focusing deeply in the emotions, in gestures and faces of your subject you'd want to push the limits of the personal distance range around two feet to push the limits of your audience and what they can tolerate in their comfort zones. So we've been diving in deep on how the proxemic distance that you choose, regardless of the lens choice, can make your audience feel the right emotional connection or disconnection when they see your photos, which as an aside is something that the movie industry knows intrinsically. 
take a look at the side of any cinema lens and you'll see they've got detailed distance scale to make sure they're precisely hitting their optimal subject distances and obviously to get repeatable follow focus pulls along the way. But back to where I was going before, studying proxemics for your photography is going to make a huge difference in another big way in how the individuals that you're photographing feel when you're taking the photo. For example, does the subject in the frame have a strong enough level of trust to have you as the photographer inside that one and a half to four foot personal distance? Or conversely, by photographing in that public distance, are you confusing or alienating the individual as to why you're not engaging in that social four to 12 foot distance? Of course, the caveat to all of this is that while these distances and proxemics are formed from a number of auditory, haptic, and neurological cues, these distances and ranges vary by culture. So your mileage may vary depending on what state, region, or country you're listening to this podcast from. So what's that action item that you can take from this episode? Well, besides being aware of the proxemics in your photography, this is where I would love to tell you guys that Lightroom or Photo Mechanic has this neat feature to sort by subject focus distance, but it looks like they took that feature away, honestly, because of how wildly unreliable those figures got embedded into your photo EXIF data. Womp womp. So my task to you on your next shoot is think about locking your lens in manual focus at the crossover distance of these proxemic ranges, like 18 inches, where you go between the intimate range and the personal space, four feet, where you go from the personal range to the public space, and 12 feet. And really try to think mindfully about what crossing into one range or another does to your image, your subject, and yourself as a photographer, and how you approach the world. Enjoying listening to the Photo Forward podcast? Want to hear more thought-provoking, creative visual storytellers? Well, this is where you come in. We want to get the word out as wide as possible about Photo Forward and reach as many listeners as possible. And the best way to do that is through reviews and recommendations on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you consume your podcasts. If you want to support more engaging and intimate conversations with photographers, videographers, and storytellers the world over, head on over to the Photo Forward page and drop a review or even a rating. It means a ton to growing the show, and I personally read through each and every one to make sure this is the best damn visual storytelling podcast out there. As much fun as creating this series in a vacuum and pushing out content into the void is, I want to hear from you guys. Are there topics or guests that you'd love to get on the podcast here in 2020? Or are there some big nagging questions that you've got on photography or cinematography that you want me to cover in one of these solo episodes? Just hit me up at B Brewer Photo or drop an email to podcast at photoforward.media. My goal is to make 2020 a much more collaborative, community focused season of the Photo Forward podcast, and I can't wait to keep creating with all of you throughout the year. So, as always, keep seeing, keep shooting and keep putting your best photo forward. Later. Later.